So we are learning about this two-way data binding, right? I have added this bootstrap and this one. Let's try to add label so that we can have having a name. So I want to try to name here. A place folder. Go to name. You see here. So this is the name. So let's try to make it simple. This is the name we are having. And whatever the name we are writing, this one. Okay. I need to show it at the bottom. So here I am writing my name or something like this. I need to show it at the bottom. So whenever I am trying to type something, I need to show it at the bottom. So this is the basic requirement. We already know how to implement this one in the JavaScript. So for example, let's say that I will be having here what do you okay? I want to show here the class is equal to name or something like this. I want to show the name here. So whatever we are typing in this input box, we need to show it here. Normally, what we will try, uh, what is the event handler we will take it is the input. So whenever the user is typing anything, we need to capture it. So this is the input. Okay. Or otherwise, in the JavaScript, you will write document dot get element by id dot add event listener of input will say. So this is the event handler. And on name change or anything. Okay, we are taking this one. So let's let's try to take here main.js and in the methods on name change. So now here. Let's console this one. Console.log. I will type. Let's see that whether it is invoking or not. I'm going to the inspect element. Going to inspect element. Fine. And I will write something. So here it is invoking. Fine. So whenever I am typing something, so the method is getting invoking. So that means this event is working. Now I want to capture the current text box value. Current text box value is normal. You will get try to get something like document dot get element by id of this input box dot value. We'll try to get it. Here we can capture it through the event. So I am passing the event here. So here you will get an event. Let's see about the event. What are the data? What is the data it is having in the event? I will show you. So now here if you type something, if you type something here we are able to see the input event. In this one, let's see that where this value is actually having. So target, this is the input value. And so now the requirement is, so here we are able to see the event. In this event, we are having a target. Target means nothing but what is the target element we have targeted. That is nothing but an input. In this target, if you try to see this whole level of object, we'll be having lot of options in this one. At the bottom, you'll be able to see somewhere so when you try to explore it, these are all the things you'll be having. Somewhere you'll be having the value. Okay. We can able to see uh, value here. Okay. So the value is nothing but this value. So this value you'll be trying to change it in the DOM. So this is a DOM object. We'll try to change it. Now I can capture this value, something like event dot target in the target. I'm having this value. Okay. This is the target I will be having. Now let's close, let's minimize this one. Now when I am writing here, see we here I am able to get the values, right? Whatever the data, where each key, key, keyboard, keyboard pressing, I am able to capture all the input box data which I am having. Now what I need to do? So after capturing this data, I need to show it at the bottom. This is the second requirement, whatever what I need to do. So here in the main.html, so here we need to show it. So what I can do in the Vue.js concept, so in the JavaScript concept, you will try to inner HTML or inner text, something like that, you will write it. But here I will try to do name is equal to first time it will be empty. Okay. So I'm taking a data property name so that I can use this name here. Curly braces name. Now what I will try to do is, so here whenever I'm getting the value, here I can write this dot name is equal to event dot target dot value. I will, I will add it to you. Now let's see. That. So here if I try to do it, so whenever I'm typing here, see, I'm able to get the value. Okay, I'm able to get the value. Now what I want to do is here, for example, let's say that the default value is something like Leela. I want to show some name as a default value. So whenever the user refreshes, the default value should be Leela. Here it is showing at the bottom. Leela is the default value. But in the text box also, it needs to show the default value. So that if the user wants to keep that name, he can keep it or otherwise he can change it. But here to, in order to show this one, what we do, what we need to do is here we need to write value. Okay. 
is equal to name. Nothing but VIFN bind. And this one is VIFN on. Now, if I try to see the output, I refresh this one. See, in the both the places, I'm able to see. Now, if I'm trying to change it here, I'm able to change it down also. So, that means I am able to send the data from the JavaScript, this name, to the template. Whenever the user is trying to change in this template, I'm able to change it in the JavaScript also. Okay, this variable also I'm able to update it. But through the plain core, the concepts which we have learned in. So through the attribute binding and also through the event handling. So that means these two values, we are, we are making use of these two things, two directives, and we are trying to achieve this one. So this is called as a two-way data binding. So that means through the JavaScript, whenever you are trying to change the data in the JavaScript, the template is able to respond to that variable. And whenever you are trying to change the data in the template, that name value through the input box, then also the JavaScript is able to respond to that one. So this is the concept. This is called as a two-way data binding. So this is the two-way. Now, for example, let's say that in Vue.js, instead of applying these all the things, we can achieve it very easily, very simple. So that is nothing but I can remove this one. Okay, and I can also remove this one. And I can write something like v model is equal to name that's it so we even model so we are binding this name property through the html and also through the javascript now when you have added a name here this name property okay this name property i have added it here now with this is a vip model directive this applies as a two-way data binding now if you try to see this one so this also does the same thing now i there is no need for me to capture this event name change these all things i can repeat simple so I can apply, I can create a data property name and I can use VIFN model in order to get this data binding. Now, if I try to see the output here, see the same thing happens whenever I try to change it also, I'm able to change it this one. Okay. So this is how we can, this is called as a two-way data binding. So this one is available in Angular and View, whereas the React, it is not available. So the React thing is you need to proceed through the first process. So input and also through the attribute binding. So like this, we need to do it. Whereas here in the Vue.js in Angular, we have an VIFN model and in the Angular, we'll be having ng model. Okay. So like this, we'll be having ng model. Like this, we'll be having. Okay. One second. Now I am bring. Yeah. Where we are. So we are discussing about this two-way data binding, right? So this one is in uh, Angular. Uh, so we will see about this VIFN model. This is the usage of this VIFN model. So now, VIFN two-way by data binding, VIFN model by using this VIFN model, we can interact through the template and also with the JS. So without using the event handler and also the attribute binding and all those things, using this VIFN model, we can do it. Now, for example, let's say that <coughs> what is the what is the beauty of this one is. For example, let's say that we are having this one. I need to show a full name here. Okay. So I want to show a full name. So here full name, we can have in a such a way that I can have a method full name. Okay. This is the method full name. And full name means nothing but let's say that return this dot name. And I will send something like uh, hello or something like this name or any any data i want to attach some name so now whatever the user he, he is adding so or otherwise i will try that i can add some so good morning or anything i can add some message to this one like this i need to add some message you can also use the so here now let's try to see full name so this is a method right we need to use a curly braces right now let's say that whenever whenever i am trying to change the name automatically this full name method also will be invoked so there is no need for us to call this full name automatically vue.js will be able to find that okay full name is dependent on this name whenever the user tries to change this input box so i need to call this method i need to add this one off i need to send this text message you can do some logic and here what i will try to do so here i am able to see that hello good morning lila now i am trying to change some name Okay, here it is automatically saying hello, good morning, and we are able to see this one, right? So this is also good. So now, in order to do it in the JavaScript and all those things, so we need to do so much of uh, work in this one. But here there is no need for us. So like this. But the downside, but the downside of this one is, for example, let's say that I am having another input box here down at there down. I am having another input box which does not relate to this one. 
So here I am having, I will try to open the box. And here I am having a label. Let's say that uh, <coughs> country. So I am having some country. Some other input box I am having. So I didn't get that. The Alexa, stop. So here we will be using class is equal to form control. Okay. So this is the country I am having. And if you try to see the output, so we are having two text boxes. And this one is this text box when I am trying to enter something. Here the down, the down text will respond to this text box. But this text box is no way related to this one, right? So if I change this text box also, this should not execute. So for example, you let's try to console it here. Here I am trying to console it. Console dot log. I will show you so this method execution. Now, when I try to write something, here it is executing. Fine. So, why? Because that name is changing. When the name changes, this text has to re execute. So, that is the reason it is executing. So, fine. Now, when I am trying to change the country, so there is no need for us that full name method needs to be executed. For example, if I write something, this one in the new 3 Okay. We are having some other uh, uh, country or anything. Country is equal to NT. Okay. We don't have any binding, right? So here I will be using VI for model country. Okay. Now I will be showing some country name at the bottom. Here I will be showing country name at the bottom. So this one is related to this one, and this one is related to this full name. Now let's see what will happen. So normally it has to be working. Now here, let's try to change it. So here it is working. Now if I try to execute this one, see this full name is also executing. If you try to see here, so this one is no way respond to this one. So there is no way connection with this country. Why? Because if this execution, so full name, full name is executing. When I am trying to change the country also, full name is executing. Now in the full name, is there any relation with the country? There is no relation with the country. All the time if it executes also, it will execute with the same name only. That the same name is nothing but this Lila name only. But here, when I am trying to change the country also, it is executing. So that means you need to understand that whenever you are trying to use this full name, okay, whenever you are trying to use this full name method, whenever you are trying to use a method name method in the template, you need to understand that whenever any template changes occurs, okay, whenever any template changes or any any variable changes occurs, automatically all the methods will try to invoke that when so Vue.js doesn't know that uh, what what does this full name method implementation is so it doesn't know that whether this country variable is using or not also Vue.js cannot able to determine it it will be thinking that okay some variable has been changed whatever the methods that are used in this template I need to re-execute it again why because there may be a chance of using this variable name so that this method invocation so I need to do it so then like that it will be thinking but here like we know that this full name doesn't have any relationship with the country variable if it has a country variable re relation means then it is okay fine this full name has to be executed but here when i am trying to change the country also this method is getting executed which which causes the performance issue this should not happen okay so that means whenever you change the name only this full name method should be uh, should be executed whenever i change the country only if you are having this uh, get full country name or something like any method we are having means it should be executed so that means you need to understand that any method is there in the template means it should be executed when any variable change is there according to that method name only whatever the variable names we are using in that method then only it needs to execute but here if you try to use it like this all the variable uh, whenever any change in the variable it is happening automatically all the methods will be invoked for example if i try to use this get country in this method name so whenever you try to change the name also this this country method also will invoke so this should not happen so this recreates a performance issue so in order to overcome this one so we we have a special type of properties those are called as a computed properties okay so these are up to now these are data properties we have seen this one right these are called as a data properties in order to overcome this performance issue we have another type of properties those are called as a computed properties so let's try to discuss that one about this computed properties <coughs> 